G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory. It's been a really sunny Easter here, which has been great because I have been hopelessly addicted to the spectroheliograph, the SHG700, spectroheliograph 700 from ML Astro. Now this is a device that I tried it out. I gave it a bit of a demo, but spectroheliograph work is a completely different workflow and a different way of doing things. It took a long time for me to get that video out as I got my head around how to do it. Now that was really me having first light, uh, but since then I've been tuning the device, I've been optimizing the observatory, and I've been really dialing it in to get better results, to see how far I can push this thing. And I've got to say, I am so impressed with the level of detail that I can get out of this. It has a kind of sharpness and clarity in it that you don't see with a regular HA Eloton tuned telescope. I find those telescopes have a kind of glowy, bloomy kind of quality about them. Man, I am so happy with this image. And this is barely scraping the surface of spectroheliograph photography in general. I haven't even changed the tuning to calcium K, which this thing can do as well. But I have been getting better at using this spectroheliograph. So I did want to share some tips and tricks that I've been doing in the observatory. And I want to show you the end-to-end -end process. There is a quiet revolution happening in solar astrophotography right now. I know a few of you have these on back order and they're just about to land in your post office boxes right now. So hopefully this video will help you guys out. And if you're curious about this spectroheliograph technology, this video should be very interesting for you. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. and tell the people what they should never do. Uh, don't look at the sun. How crazy is this? A woman in 2017 in New York looked at the sun for six seconds. And you know what happened? She burnt the eclipse into her retina. This is what it looks like. It's the eclipse. I mean, you can image the eclipse this way if you want, but it's much easier to image the sun with a spectroheliograph. Okay, so here's how I've got the spectroheliograph set up right now. I'm actually scanning in deck and it might take some experimentation to figure out which way you want to scan and how that processes in the software. So when you do a scan and it gets processed, it'll tell you the tilt angle. And what you want to do is come back in here and rotate. I use these screws here and I just rotate the whole unit until I can get that angle as close as possible to one or zero. When you get that angle correct, it scans actually quite round and it's not correcting that major tilt, which it will do anyway in software, but it's good to get that tilt as close as possible to zero and then the images just become a lot clearer. So I spent a whole day doing that, just making scans and rotating until I got it close to zero. Obviously everything else is covered because I don't want any of this to absorb any heat or get damaged by the sun when I'm doing solar stuff. The other thing I had to think about was getting the most frame rate out of this little camera. This is the, uh, the QHY 687M, beautiful camera, small pixels, and I ran the USB cable straight into the USB 3 port on the computer. The frame rate is really important. You want to do everything in your power to get that frame rate up. And if you're using an external drive like I am, that also means making sure the external drive is also going into USB 3, your highest speed ports that you can on the computer. Now before I start the session I'll do a little tuning, uh, but that means actually finding the sun first. So I'll bump up the gain so that I can see some brightness. This should get brighter, like that, and I'll pull down the gain, 
And I think we can see the sun there. That's a nice hard edge. So I'll just center it. Okay, I can already tell that is maybe the top or the bottom of the sun there. And I'll pull the gain down to about 30, which is a beautiful, yep, beautifully centered line there. And now if I scan upwards, because my tilt angle is so good now, as I scan upwards through it, it stays in the middle, which is what we want. Perfect. Uh, but now that I've got this, I will change my region of interest to just 160 tall. This is a very thin strip, right? So I'll zoom into that strip, 200%. And what I'm looking for is the edge and the hydrogen line, which is just down a bit here. So I'll keep going down till I find the hydrogen line. There it is. That's where all our detail comes from. But the trick here is that there's actually three things to focus. There's the distance between the prism and the optics of the telescope itself. There's the distance of the camera from the prism. And then there's the tuner on here as well. So the first thing I'll do is the hard edge. Now that I've zoomed into this, it's probably a bit hard to see, but I'm looking for the hard edge here. So I'm going to tune the actual telescope focus until I get the hardest edge possible. That looks good. Then I can tune the camera distance itself again for a nice hard edge. And you'll see vertical scintillating lines there. And then finally I'll tune the prism itself. That looks good. Now I'm ready to go back inside. That's all I need to do out here. Okay, now the rest of this process is essentially in sharp cap fit auto. And I'm going to go to the bottom of the sun by holding down south in this case, because I'm going to scan from the south to the north. And we can see here the exposures down to 0.283. I've got the frame rate limit here set to 120. Uh, now this is so we have a consistency in the in the scan if i go maximum you can see here i'm getting like almost 500 frames per second uh, which is great but we don't actually want that much so i'm going to go maybe we could try 240. now there is a there is an exposure calculator where you can calculate all this um, but i have been getting great results with 120. so i'm just going to set that maximum frame rate to 120. We're on the southern end of the sun now, it's out of frame, so there's nothing in here, but I'm just gonna go quick capture, unlimited, and then I'm gonna hold down north. And I've set a custom slew speed here, so that that slew speed kind of matches the frame rate that we've got. I'm just scanning up through the sun now. I'll leave this in real time so you can see exactly how long this takes. You can see it's getting smaller at the top there. And that's the scan done. Stop capture. Okay, this is the JSOL X software where the magic happens. And before we do a full process, I'll just show you something that was doing my head in for a while we can do a quick mode scan here and that'll just quickly scrub through the ser file and reconstruct our solar image there we go but i had a really hard time getting north south to be correct because i want this to be correct but it has this cool feature where you can download a res reference image from the gong uh, telescope this is a ha tune telescope which is apparently twenty eight thousand dollars worth of eliton there um, but I think our version is um, kind of better, don't you? <laughs> anyway, this is the correct orientation. Uh, and it took me a while to match my image to theirs. And the trick there was making sure that, because depending on which way you scan, these settings are going to be slightly different. And the hemisphere I'm in. So I had to tick the flip vertical axis and also had to rotate left. And I had to auto correct the P angle. Now, once these things are ticked and set, it will remember that forevermore. So that's good. And we can go on to do a full process. And this takes a little bit longer, but the results are so brilliant. It thrills me every time. It's a bit like hitting the auto stretch button 
when you're doing DSO work in PixInsight. But as you can see, it's scanning the HA here. Let's fast forward. Okay, check this out. So it's done a bunch of different images here. We've got the reconstruction. Now I'm, I can make that rounder by matching my frame rate and slew speed a bit better, but I don't mind that because what it's gonna do is, is push it in. So you're actually not losing any data, stretching anything. It's gonna compress it, which is nice. And we have the raw images and then we have the processed images. So this is still pretty raw. There's no sharpening or contrast on this one. Uh, however, there is a processed one which does have the sharpening and contrast. These are meant to be preview files, but you could walk away with this image and it would be absolutely fine. It's pretty good. I'm gonna do my sharpening and processing in different software though. Got the solar continuum, the solar disk continuum. Now for the Doppler effect, uh, which shows you the redshift between red and blue and east and west, that's not gonna work when you're scanning in deck like I am. And there's a reason I'm scanning in deck uh, because my telescope is so top heavy right now, you actually get less waviness in the scan if you are in deck. However, I might revert back to RA and do the scan east-west, maybe if I want to do more of this Doppler work because it is very interesting. There's active regions, which doesn't look correctly labeled to me. I think this is a bug in JSOLX right now. Um, however, later on you'll see it does do it correctly. Negative, I love. I've, I've always loved the negative versions of these images and um, that really appeals to me. We have the colorized H-alpha, a little too saturated for my taste, but again, it's, a, it's kind of a ready to go image, right? There is the mix, which will put the outside detail with the uh, prominences and the flares coming off and the inside detail as well. There's active regions, which is the continuum. Again, this, I think this is bugged out. I think these labels should be rotated. Uh, we have Doppler eclipse. Again, that red and blue does not correspond correctly to redshift until you're scanning in RA. However, in the technical card, because I got the angles correct, this is all correct. The north south is correct. If I download the reference image from Gong, this is how it is. Uh, so I'm really happy to see that. And it is labeling all the active regions correctly in this view and all the angles are correct. So I'm very happy about that. There is a redshift option, which actually does, this is a new feature, so I don't know much about it. It says that it could be looking at phenomenon um, that is interesting, but it is not a scientific measurement. The algorithm may accidentally detect redshifts where there are none. So the interpretation should be done with caution, but it is cool that it can measure that stuff. So what I'll be using is the unsharpened, uncontrasty, essentially raw, solar disk image. I'm gonna put them into a folder and then I'm gonna edit those. So I was gonna do a full process for you, but processing is a bit like genealogy. It's only interesting to the person doing it. And nobody cares about your grandfather being the science officer for the official Communist Party of Australia, getting arrested for stealing library books and possibly trying to start a revolution. Boring. So long story short, I stacked the raws in PixInsight's image integration. I agonized for way too long about the tone curves in IMPPG, and then I do some artful blending in Photoshop. Now, because the spectra heliograph dumps out so many different versions where you've got the, the continuum, you've got the full disc, you've got the Doppler effect, Effect, you've got the Eclipse version, so you can really get creative with how you choose to visualize this scientific data. But without further ado, here's some dramatic music and some results. That's it, I hope you enjoyed this episode. No sponsor today, although people have really been enjoying this t-shirt. Um, that's not sponsored, it's just 
I like this t-shirt so much that I had to buy another one when the old one got a bit threadbare. Uh, that's from the Celestron Threadless store if you're interested. I really like the Spectra Heliograph and I really have a lot of confidence in this product. And although there's a bit of a learning curve, it's working out quite well for me. I am in an observatory situation, so this makes more sense for me. I don't have to do all of that alignment and setup every single time. I can just push a button and go. And it's very, very fast. But if you are curious about this product, it's the SHG700, which you can get from ML Astro. Uh, back orders are way out till June at this point. They are machined beautifully, handcrafted and quality controlled so it is a boutique operation at this point. If you are interested, you just have to put your name in the queue. They appear to be selling like hotcakes and I'm not surprised. Anyway, I hope your astrophotography journey is going well. You've been watching Star Stuff. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and remember, everything is meaningless. We're all going to die.